eight percent, followed by Senators Manny Pacquiao at six percent and Ping Lakson at two percent. In the vice presidential race, Marcos's running mate, presidential daughter Sara Duterte, is still at the top with 56 percent. That is three percentage point increase from the February survey. Senate President Tito Soto is far behind with 20 percent of likely voters, followed by Senator Kiko Pangilinan with 15 percent. About 6 percent of survey respondents prefer other vice presidential bets, while the rest are undecided, not voting for anyone for the post or refusing to identify their choice. The face-to-face -face survey was conducted among 2,400 respondents from March 17 to the 21st, when the candidates joined a number of debates, forums, and sat down for interviews. The survey has a 2% margin of error at 95% confidence level. Well, the Marcos campaign welcomes the latest Pulsatia survey. In a statement, Marcos spokesperson Vic Rodriga says they acknowledge the overwhelming support but still calls on supporters, volunteers, and campaigners to, quote, refrain from complacency and remain focused in achieving their target of 70% presidential preference mark. Robredo's team also happy about the results, saying what we're seeing now is, quote, the turning of the tide. Spokesperson Barry Gutierrez adds the improvement in Robredo's numbers establishes that she has the momentum which they expect to further intensify until May 9. Senator Manny Pacquiao, meanwhile, determined to continue his campaign, despite the survey showing him in fourth place. Pacquiao says his focus is on reaching more voters in classes D and E, which comprise the masses. He says he will not back out of the race, despite calls for candidates to unite to stand a chance against survey frontrunner Bong Bong Marcos. Hindi lamang sa pag-iikot natin, kundi yung uh, ipinaparating din natin sa pamagitan ng social media sa abot natin mga kaya na, na ang laban ni Manny Pacquiao hindi ito laban ng uh, laban sa sarili ko kundi laban ng uh, sambay ng Pilipino yung mga nahihirapan sa buhay sinasabi ko naman na uh, tuloy yung laban ko sa mahigit siguro uh, dalawampot limang taon sa pagbubuksin ko hindi naman ako na duwag, hindi naman ako na naayaw, nangayaw sa laban. The Lakson Soto tandem also unfazed by the survey results. Lakson says surveys are no longer believable since they do not reflect the experience on the ground. He explains the reception of people in areas where they go to are warm and spontaneous. Soto, who still ranks second in the vice presidential race, echoes Lakson's stance. Soto adds surveys only condition the minds of voters. And I think, hindi lang na ako pwede magsabi niyan, na even in Bohol, when we entered the Capitol building, hindi namin expect na ganun kawang, hindi naman to choreograph, hindi naman ito yung ibig sabihin na may compass sa Capitol building itself, and that's Bohol, ha? Walang local officials na nagkikiri sa amin, pero very spontaneous yung reception na nakita namin doon. And also in other areas. We have the support of the people on the ground. No? I don't know what, what, uh, what figures they're talking about. Well, despite this, the duo says they will continue their strategy of engaging voters through town hall meetings. The so-called Isco Moreno volunteer groups wants candidates to unite against Bongbong Marcos. In an interview on politics as usual, I am Pilipinas lead convener Tim Orbo said it is not yet too late for candidates to join forces to keep the Marcoses out of Malacanang. For a political analyst, candidates will have to set aside personal political interests. BBM's lead is uh, unprecedented, but he is not unbeatable. No? There's mm -hmm. a narrow pathway uh, for victory for those challenging him in the end. And that's 43% uh, uh, mm -hmm. of his numbers are still soft votes. Not against BBM or Sara, but since we're here and we know tayo na nakita natin what has happened in the past, why return to the past when we can move to the future? Just last week, I am Pilipinas' Cebu chapter shifted support from Moreno to Vice President Robredo, but Moreno's campaign manager, Lito Banayo, points out it may be too late now for unity talks. I've been through all of, so many uh, efforts at coalition building, but there, were so, there was so much treachery in, mm. in these coalition talks. No? 
uh, may usapan pero hindi naman tinutupad, no? Catch the replay of Politics as Usual, where I also speak to congressional candidate Richard Gomez for later. That's on Saturday, 11 a.m. and Sunday at 10 p.m. only here on CNN Philippines. Officials deny a shortage in supply is pushing prices of food up. Now, this is happening at a time when motorists are spending more for fuel. Rex and Mito visits public markets to give us a check on food prices. Jake Palomero is buying some pork chop for his Tapsilogan Carinderia in Quezon City. His business has been at the mercy of fast-changing pork prices recently. Prices are higher by 10 pesos per kilo at Nepa Q Mart this week than last week. He's now pondering if he should also jack up the price of his top silog meal. Sinasabi naman namin, oh, tumaas ngayon. O oh, pag mababa, mababa din naman talaga ang presyo namin. Pag tumaas talaga ng 40 pesos, nag-a-up kami ng 5 pesos din. Pork retailer Tony Goto says the unsteady supply of pork may be causing the unstable prices. Frozen casim at 240 pesos per kilo, frozen pork chop at 210, and frozen liempo at 290. Fresh meat is more expensive. The reason why Gotos, unlike before, has decided to sell frozen meat. Mas gusto nila ng sariwa. Eh ngayon sa mahal ng bilihin, gusto mo pa bang bumili ng sariwa? Siyempre kung pwede na yung frozen, eh di sa frozen ka na. In the case of beef, one seller says, Prices are also higher due to recent increases in gasoline prices, making the transport of cuts from the slaughterhouse to the wet market more expensive. From 290 in December last year, a kilo of beef now ranges from 300 to 320 pesos per kilo. And there is no shortage of customers. Siyempre, tumatawad kasi mahirap yung buhay eh. Despite what's happening on the ground, Finance Secretary Sonny Dominguez denies there's a shortage of commodities. He says it's the anticipation of shortages that are driving up prices. Inflation or the rate in rise of prices of goods just jumped from 3 to 4% for March. Government statisticians are blaming the higher oil prices to the Ukraine-Russia war. The management of the supply is uh, well within... Uh, our our uh, our mandate and uh, well with uh, well within our capability of doing it the price of chicken meanwhile went down by 10 pesos from last week but sales are also down and retailer Maricel de Vera is clueless as to why although there are bird flu outbreaks in some areas in the country hirap pa rin hindi pa masyadong bumabalik yung dati Fish prices are more stable, but sellers are also expecting these to go up during the Holy Week. For vegetables, the prices of carrots, ampalaya, and cucumbers are up, while that of cabbage, onions, and sayote are down. Rex Remipio, CNN Philippines. Up ahead, the fuel subsidy rollout will soon be back on track as Comlec exempts the program from the election spending ban. And some centers thumbing down Health Secretary Francisco Duque's push for legislation that would make COVID-19 vaccination mandatory. Details next.
Welcome back to CNN Philippines. Good news for PUV drivers. The distribution of fuel subsidy can resume soon, even amid the election ban on public spending. Amar Santos joins us live. Amar. Pia, the Comelec Unbank grants the petition of the LTFRB to continue with the fuel subsidy program despite the ban on disbursement of public funds during the election period. Comelec Commissioner George Garcia says the transport regulator only has to wait for the poll body's formal resolution. He says it may be released tomorrow or Friday at the latest and will contain strict conditions the LTFRB has to comply with. Kahit paano, this is now a notice to the LTFRB and to the different uh, departments that you can now prepare the plan on how to properly implement the, the uh, fuel subsidy. Huwag na po kayong mag-alala, lalo na po yung mga drivers natin, mga farmers, lalo na rin po mga tax tricycle drivers natin. Approve na po yan. The COMELEC wants details on the distribution of the fuel subsidy, including the list of beneficiaries. More than half of the targeted beneficiaries were left waiting after the LTFRB suspended payouts last March 25. Over 100,000 jeepney and bus drivers have received 6,500 pesos in their Pantawid Pasada cards, while delivery service riders will get 4,550 pesos. Still, no list of tricycle drivers or the amount they will get. Back to you. Hey, more. any updates on the elections from uh, Comex and Bank? Pia, uh, Comelec Commissioner Marlon Casquejo also announces that the Anne Bank has suspended the overseas absentee voting in Shanghai due to its COVID-19 lockdown. There are 1,600 registered voters there. And the poll body may also do the same in several other areas like Ukraine, and some 127 voters may be affected. The Comelec also announced the creation of a task force contra fake news to go after individuals spreading disinformation and while the COMELEC has finished the printing of 67 million ballots, more than 224,000 were found to be defective and will be subject to reprinting. Back to you. Amor Santos there reporting live. President Duterte has ordered house-to-house -house vaccinations for COVID-19 as millions of doses are set to expire in three months' time. AC Nichols tells us more in this report. An advisor to the president recently revealed that over 27 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines bought by the Philippines will expire in three months. President Duterte says the government is not to blame. Ang bakuna nandyan. Para sa lahat ng Pilipino, in order natin yan. Ngayon, kung may mga Pilipino marami pa na hindi nakapagbakuna o ayaw makipagbakuna, eh, hindi naman kasalanan ng gobyerno na magbili tayo uh, commensurate to the number of Filipinos that would be vaccinated. He called on those who have yet to be inoculated to get the vaccine. Otherwise, the expiring doses might go to waste. The president said these could be donated to other countries. But he's still hoping to convince more Filipinos to get vaccinated by bringing the shots straight to their homes. Wala na tayong magawa. The most that we can do is a last-minute uh, program. We embark on a, a program that would uh, deliver natin yung vaccine sa bahay-bahay. Health Chief Francisco Duque has assured the president the vaccines will not go to waste. He said the country's vaccine wastage is just over 1%, far below the 10% indicative wastage rate used by the World Health Organization. Yung po sinasabi nilang 25 to 27 million na mag expire by July, ang tao po natin dyan yung theoretical expiration. Hindi pa po ito expired kasi July pa yan. Magagamit pa rin po natin yan. The secretary said most of these doses were donated or bought by either the private sector or LGUs. At the same time, he recognized that authorities need to work harder to get more Filipinos inoculated against the coronavirus. Duque said national and local candidates can help by encouraging their supporters 
to get vaccinated. Dahil sila naman mga influencers sa kanila pong mga komunidad, maganda ikampanya din nila yung uh, bakuna, Mr. President, para talaga whole of nation and whole of uh, government approach tayo. According to government data, over 66 million have already been fully vaccinated. That's around 73% of the target population. But the coverage for booster shots remain low at 12.2 million. AC Nichols, CNN Philippines. Duque also wants Congress to push for legislation that would make COVID-19 vaccination mandatory. We would welcome, Mr. President, if the Senate or Congress will, if they can master that will, political will, to make vaccination and booster a uh, mandatory like in other countries, no? pero alam ko po, this is going to be very controversial. Pero sana naman po ay uh, intindihin nila na tayo po ay uh, nagbumili ng mga bakuna. Tama po kayo, Mr. President, para maproteksyonan ang publiko, ang ating po mga kababayan. Eh di naman po natin makontrol kung ayaw ng tao ang magpabakuna. But Senator Coco Pimentel says making COVID-19 vaccination mandatory is unconstitutional because the vaccines are still in the experimental stage. Presidential candidate Senator Ping Lakson and his running mate, Senate President Tito Soto, also rejected Duque's call. Dapat ang ginawa niya noon pa at the start of the vaccination program, noon pa sila nag to house, noon pa sila nag nag massive information campaign about the vaccine. Hindi yung ngayon, dahil mag-expire yung 27 million doses, ipapasa niya pa sa Congress. Parang exercise na political will. Alam naman nilang six days na lang ang nadidira sa amin. Oh, mag magko-convert pa kami into the uh, National Canvassing Board. Anong batas na ang pinagsasasabi nila? I think may jamilage na lang ng DOH yan. Nag, uh, ano, Nag-pay saving dahil ang dami nilang sinabit. Mula noong March 2020 hanggang ngayon. CNN Philippines has sought Duque's response to these remarks. Meanwhile, Filipino Catholics will be able to observe more religious traditions this Holy Week. One of the oldest churches in the country will be allowing other rituals for the first time in two years. But Caroline Bonkin reports adjustments are still in place for the new normal. Since Friday, devotees were again allowed to get close to the image of the Black Nazarene. But instead of the traditional pahalik, they can only touch the image and only after sanitizing their hands. No wiping of any fabric as well to prevent coronavirus transmission. Dahil nga para hindi tayo maging spreader at hindi po hangarin ng gawain ng Semana Santa ang maging uh, spreader ng virus. Devotees don't mind the new protocols. Okay lang sa amin. Pinayagan na kaming makapasok sa simbahan. Dati nung pandemic, dyan na kami sa labas. Siguro naman, safe. Kumusunod pa rin namin ako sa protocol. Kiapo Church will also resume other religious rituals like the Pabasa on Holy Monday to Wednesday. Naka-face mask pa rin tayo. At yung uh, physical distancing pa. Inalis din naman ng IATF yung curfew. So kaya pwede tayong... Uh, 24 hours na open. Instead of the traditional procession, there will be a motorcade of the Black Nazarene's image on Good Friday following the translation route. No climbing or pulling of the courage, no walking barefoot. Image replicas, which usually join the procession, will instead be paraded and blessed ahead this April 6th and 7th. So, lahat po ng mga may imahen na nais po na madala dito sa simbahan, open po yun. Hindi pa tayo pwede basta-basta magsiksikan. Kaya yung, lalo na yung mga imahen, wag nang dalin sa Good Friday. Kaya naglaan tayo ng dalawang araw, madala na nila dito yung, yung imahen nila. All these events will be streamed live. Priests and health officials discourage the practice of crucifixion. Warning, it can cause infection and blood loss. We request, kung may iiwasan naman po, uh, maari naman po tayo katulad ng sabi kong sumamba sa ating Panginoon sa ibang paraan, hindi po yung para mag-inflict pa ng harm sa ating mga sarili. Jenny will be back in Quiapo for the Pabasa and Holy Week Mass. Magsisindi ako ng kandila niya para sa mga yumao namin sa namatay. While Sharina plans to hear Mass 
and then stay home with her family on Holy Week. Pandemic pa din naman, so mo, I think most of the people will be spending their time at the beach. Sa, ano, so kami, we just plan to stay at home. The Catholic Church asked the faithful for a solemn celebration of the Holy Week. Caroline Bonkin, CNN Philippines. A Catholic school that's been around for more than 100 years is closing its doors. The College of the Holy Spirit in Manila says it is shutting down because of financial constraints that were worsened by the COVID-19 pandemic. Stanley Gajeta has more. Alumni Victoria and Cora pay a visit to their alma mater one last time. While at the Commerce Building, they viewed the stained glass art piece by national artist Fernando Amor Solo while reminiscing about happy memories. We were having fun because wala masyadong classes. So mostly half day. But uh, during the morning, talagang tight security, we cannot go out. We're always hopeful and we believe uh, that God has a better plan for everything. It was equally sad for Winston when he learned he would have to leave his workplace of 20 years. Nagulat kami nung nag-start na yung pandemic. Yun, may mga hakahaka, una hakahaka pa lang yun. So hanggang naging totoo pala. The administration of President Rodrigo Duterte has approved the push for free college education in state colleges and universities. However, that also led to the closure of private universities and colleges like the College of the Holy Spirit. Some parents prefer to enroll their children in SUCs than in private schools. The COVID-19 lockdown saw sharp declines in the number of enrollees, making it difficult for the learning institution to survive serious financial losses. They tried their best. In fact, uh, we formed a management corporation to try to you know, save the school for part, but then I guess the Holy Spirit had other plans. Some of the Holy Spirit's notable alumni include award-winning journalist Sheila Coronel, peace negotiator Miriam Coronel Ferrer, former Security and Exchange Commissioner Teresita Herbosa, Eugenia Apostol of the Philippine Daily Inquirer, and investigative journalist Buma Cruz, to name a few. The school's last batch, comprising some 30 students, will attend the final graduation rites on April 20th. Malungkot kasi parang wala ka nang babalikan in the future na parang gagraduate ka na nga pero wala kang mabibisita ng school. According to alumni, the missionary of Sister Servants of the Holy Spirit intend to sell the school but there's no prospective buyer yet. For now, the nuns will continue their mission to help poor communities outside the metro. Sure might that be here. But you know, the spirit lives on. It lives on in every heart of every alumni that was raised here. Stan Ligayate, CNN Philippines. Still head on Newsnight, more Filipinos have made it to Forbes Billionaires list, but there's little change to rankings among the wealthiest Pinoys this year. And the Lakers trended after their devastating elimination from the NBA playoffs. This and more sports updates when we come back.
Welcome back. Forbes has named the world's billionaires this year, and real estate tycoon Manny Villar remains the richest Filipino on the list. The former Senate president is joined by 19 other Pinoys, among them ports tycoon Enrique Razon Jr. and Henry C. Jr. of SM Investments. Villar rose to 263rd from last year's 352nd, with a current net worth of around 426 billion pesos. Lots of action in sports today. The Los Angeles Lakers are officially out of the NBA playoffs after a 1-1 to 110 loss to the Phoenix Suns, the same team that sent them packing last year. Star player LeBron James' ankle injury kept him on the bench throughout the game. This is the second time LeBron did not make it to the postseason since joining the Lakers in 2018. The L.A. squad has missed the playoffs seven times within the last nine years. And back here at home, the PBA Governor's Cup Finals have begun. Game one between the Meralco Bolts and defending champs Barangay Nebra is underway at the Smart Araneta Coliseum. Things are looking up for the Bolts in the first quarter, snatching the lead with 25-23. to 23. Another thrilling championship showdown, this time at the Mall of Asia Arena. It is Cream Line versus Petro Gas for the Premier Volleyball League's first Open Conference Finals match. So far, Creamline has the lead in set one at 20 to 15. Go to our social media platforms for updates on these games. Now, good news for Twitter users. You may soon get a chance to fix your tweets even after posting them. The social media platform has been working on an edit function since last year. It'll be tested in the coming months. Twitter's head of consumer products said they're, quote, approaching this feature with care so it cannot be used to alter the record of public conversation. And that is it for now. Join me again on News.ph at 7 p.m. I'm Theo Antares for Newsnight, where we go above and beyond the headlines. Philippines Network, Radio Ronda, DCRL Batak, member Kapisana ng mga broadcaster ng Pilipinas. Women today wear different hats, which comes with different responsibilities. So as we celebrate National Women's Month, we'll take a closer look at ways we can understand the health issues every woman should be aware of and the best self-care tips for women today. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and welcome to MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. Our guests are here today to tell us how we can be a part of this movement and advocate for women's health. With us is Dr. Irene Sige. She's an obstetrician gynecologist from Cardinal Santos Medical Center and the St. Luke's Medical Center in Global City. Also with us is Natalie Africa Verseles, who is the director for Center of Women's and Gender Studies from the University of the Philippines. Thank you both for joining us here on MedTalk Health Talk. Now, there are several prevailing beliefs about women that can have a direct effect on their mental health as well as their physical health. But first, let's debunk some of these misconceptions. So let's start with the misconception that women are solely responsible for home as well as family. Ms. Natsi, could you talk more about this and this notion and how does it affect the women of today? Yes, Doc Freddy, that's actually a reality, not just in the Philippines, but across all countries of the world, perhaps, no? It's, it really stems, the roots of this belief is what we call the theory of biological determinism, just because it's women who are able to get pregnant, give birth, breastfeed, automatically it's assumed that they are naturally more caring, more nurturing, more patient, more altruistic, which results in them being assigned the bulk of what we call reproductive work or the care work that women do in households. We know that the work that women do in households is not easy. It's actually quite onerous. It deprives them 
of many opportunities. I agree with that. So one of the main issues here is that of gender equality. So how can this be addressed, uh, Ms. Natalie? It's not necessarily the burden only of the women because you think that it's women who should be advocating for their own equality in the households. It actually demands the participation of all other members of the households, particularly the male members, whether it's the father or the brothers, etc. So what we should be doing is actually redistributing the work that women do in households. Fathers in particular can take a greater role in caring for their children, particularly when they're very young, when they need more attention. So that's that's one way. And mm-hmm. it's very actionable, is it not? I mean, men can just simply offer to assist women and to ask them, what is it that I can do to make your household chores easier for you? Do you feel that we've moved forward with this? Because nowadays, there's less of a stigma with the husband or the male person of the household taking care of the child or doing things that would be commonly uh, deemed as something that is solely for the woman to do. No, I find that among the younger generation of men, it seems more Mm -hmm. acceptable for them to take on more work in the household as compared to men from the older generation. But I'd also say it's very key that you pointed out how important the household is because it is really the most basic unit of society. And if we want to promote gender equality, we should start in our households. And mothers in particular can raise sons who understand that it's not necessarily solely the task of women to do all the work that's necessary to maintain households. Along this lines, we'll also be talking about some health issues that women should also be aware of. Dr. Irene, what are some of the top five health issues that you think women here in the Philippines should be really aware about? Right now, we are encouraging uh, more on preventive medicine rather than than curative medicine. The common ones like uh, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, obesity, Mm -hmm. some sexually transmitted illnesses, breast cancer, among others, and also mental health issues. Those are very important ones, and we'll be discussing them in further detail as we go on in the program. Miss Nazi, let's talk about the landscape where women are, especially here in the Philippines. What can you say about that? What are some of the challenges that women nowadays face, especially in the workplace? When we think of the workplace, we automatically think of an office. We're not. It has shown that the labor force participation rates of women are 28 to 32 percentage points lower than men's which means that there are less women as a percentage of women who are of working age, who are in the labor force. So that brings us back to what we were discussing earlier about how women are still seen as primarily responsible for domestic work. Dr. Irene, talking about pregnancy and maternity, especially in the workplace, is there a certain time where it is deemed safe for her to continue to be working or should she be resting at a certain point awaiting uh, the birth of a child? As we always recommend, um, having children or getting pregnant should be a plan ahead so that the mommy can prepare her herself physically, psychologically, mentally for the pregnancy. So actually, pregnancy is not a disease. It's a physiologic uh, role of a woman. So when she's planning to have children early on, she should be already consulting her doctor so that her pregnancy will be less complicated. The woman can actually work until the term pregnancy as long as she's considered low risk. However, if during the prenatal course, there's uh, comorbidities like uh, diabetes, hypertension, obesity, which will be determined in the prenatal checkups, appropriate recommendation on when to do bed rest, when can they go back to mm-hmm. work, will be recommended by their OB gynecologist. So the emphasis is on proper preparation before pregnancy, during pregnancy, and after delivery. So that is definitely an important factor, especially for first-time mothers. Now, National Women's Month is a time to celebrate women's achievements, but it's also a time to raise awareness on issues unique to them. There are several health issues that impact women differently than men. When we return, we'll talk about these health concerns and what women can do to manage the risks. You're watching MedTalk Health Talk. We're your partner in health.
it's no secret that women have unique health issues that only women experience. Now, understanding these medical conditions, the risk factors, and prevention can boost a woman's own health as well as their mental health. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and welcome back to MedTalk Health Talk, where your care always comes first. A common issue women face as they age is osteoporosis. This is when your bones become weak as well as brittle. Now, postmenopausal women are at higher risk for fractures associated with osteoporosis, and as a result, it can cause back pains to posture and even broken bones. Dr. Irene, could you tell us more about this condition and why women in particular are more prone to this? Are you right in saying that osteoporosis is a disease condition wherein the bones become weaker? There are several factors, like when the woman becomes menopause already because of the lower estrogen production in the body. This will trigger the bone resorption or the bone will become weaker. And also, if the woman has not maintained her ideal body weight or the body mass index, because it will have a, an effect on the weight-bearing bones of her body and not having regular exercise and also not getting the proper nutrition, the intake of uh, calcium, and also important is the exposure to sunlight because it uh, activates the production of vitamin D in the body. And other medications are also causing osteoporosis. So it's important that they have to consult their family doctor to assess their risk for osteoporosis, especially when they're 50 years old and above. Now, another health issue really prevalent in women nowadays is breast cancer. The data from the health department shows that three in every 100 Filipinas will be diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime. Women with breast cancer often experience a predictable set of emotional as well as psychological reactions to their diagnosis. Ms. Natsi, what are some ways that women can deal with the anxiety and stress of worrying about a diagnosis of having breast cancer? It's so important to have a support system. Because it's not something that you have to go through alone. And I find that women usually rely on very close family members or friends to help them through it. Because I think when you go through a devastating diagnosis and you're facing a threat to your life, I think you really need a, a lot of, well, not just support, but a lot of internal strength. It's very important for women to feel that there are people they can turn to. You know, it also relates to how families should be more supportive of women. So hopefully in the household, we will have fathers and you know, children understanding the plight of the women and doing what perhaps is necessary to unburden women of their responsibilities they carry on a day-to-day -day basis. One of the leading causes for depression for those with breast cancer is they claim that they they lose part of their womanhood when they undergo surgical operations that need to remove that cancer. How can we uplift women who may feel depressed because of the need to remove certain parts of their body? Yeah, that's a very interesting question that relates really to the larger issue of how society objectifies women and sees women principally on the basis of their appearance. So for women to internalize that and lose what they feel is an integral part of their being is also devastating. Mm -hmm. As a culture, stop prioritizing beauty, you know, start valorizing what is not considered as essential. People are more than their appearance. So for women to realize that a breast is just a body part, and it does mm -hmm. not take away from who and what they really are as humans. Now, Dr. Ayan, let's touch on STI, sexually transmitted infections for that matter. Could you talk about what are some of the risk factors that are involved here? How does this affect a woman specifically in the long term? Gynecological health of a woman really depends on the entire physical well-being of a woman. So to avoid uh, sexually transmitted illnesses, of course, we emphasize on a monogamy or a monogamous relationship because this starts from having sexual intercourse with multiple partners. And there are some protective measures that they can do when engaging in uh, sexual activities with multiple sexual partners, but that should really be discouraged. There's condom or barrier methods and use of oral contraceptive pills.
Ms. Natsi, when it comes to the choice of who should be using contraceptive, is this based on a cultural nature or is this more of a 50-50 a decision on who will be adhering to that contraception. I will insist that all women of reproductive age should have access to contraception if they so desire. Because we want mm -hmm. to prevent unintended and unplanned pregnancies, particularly for teenagers. And as Dr. Irene already mentioned, there are also barrier protections because you want to protect them from HIV AIDS or sexually transmitted infections. Dr. Irene, I want to talk about menopause how to decrease the symptoms that one may experience when they are approaching menopause or at menopause. The symptoms of menopause are as follows, like uh, you have uh, irritability, hot flashes, osteoporosis. Sometimes there are uh, abnormal bleeding and insomnia. So again, it starts with a healthy lifestyle early on. Even before a woman reaches menopause, they have to be uh, physically active Again, a uh, proper healthy diet, proper physical activity, and uh, you have to consult your ob for other comorbidities that you have so that this will not aggravate the symptoms of menopause. And there are some high-risk uh, diseases that can set in once you are menopausal. Taking steps to prevent health issues is a great form of self-care. When we return, more self-care tips for women. Your health is our mission here on MedTalk Health Talk. Many things can get in the way of caring for yourself, like work, school, or maybe even family obligations. But when we take the time to care for ourselves, we're able to show up for others at our very best. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and this is Metalk Health Talk, your partner in healthcare. One of the most effective things women can do to care for their physical health is regular screening. Dr. Irene, how does regular screening empower women? We have to do this regular screening for uh, breast cancer, for cervical cancer, for other uh, gynecologic pathology, and for the physical well-being of a woman. Right now, we are recommending a pap smear for those women who are at 21 years of age. And if they are 30 years old and above, they can do this uh, with co-testing for HPV virus. And uh, beyond uh, 50 years old, um, it can be every one year or every two years, depending on the results of the previous pop smears. But th they should be consulting their doctor because some women just, uh, you know, get information from their relatives, from their friends. And so these are unreliable information be because this will help them detect early sign of cervical cancer. Now for breast cancer, if they have risk factors like family history of cancer, early menarche mm -hmm. or late menopause, late childbearing above 30 years of age or haven't had children and intake of hormones or HRT, this will make them at risk for breast cancer. So they should be educated on and counseled on these women's diseases and be aware of the possible symptoms of a breast cancer. And for the other health issues such as diabetes, hypertension, just recently there are executive checkups, especially for working women. There are different panels of uh, metabolic blood tests for to assess the other functions like uh, for cardiac diseases, for the lungs, for the liver, all other metabolic functions. But I would also like to emphasize the adult immunization. We should not focus only to COVID-19 uh, vaccination. We have still the flu vaccine, the HPV vaccine, the pneumococcal vaccine, we really have to emphasize also on adult vaccination. Now, Ms. Natsi, comparing the Philippines with other countries in the world, what do you think are some of the biggest challenges that Filipinas face here in our country when it comes to quality at home, in the workplace, and especially, of course, uh, the biases? If you look at the latest global gender gap report for 2022, our lowest scores were in political empowerment and economic participation and opportunity. Yung health and survival, educational attainment, good tayo eh. Dr. Irene, what advice could you give women, especially when it comes to their mental health, to be able to find 
a good medium ground when it comes to the pressures that society gives to them, but at the same time, still having time to recognize themselves. In the past two years, we have realized the importance of self-care, especially for women. So number one thing is for us to enhance our spirituality and sense of gratitude. Secondly, you have to stay positive. You have to declutter your life with issues that are negative, with relationships that does not give you joy or any endeavors that does not give you joy. It's like decluttering your life. You can do the exercise, yoga, meditation, anything that will relax you and will give you joy. You can go into learn some arts and music. You can play the piano, painting. Be Approach your, your physical and well-being holistically. Now, of course, self-care also involves daily practices that make us feel nourished and happy. Ms. Natsi, what are some ways that women can cultivate self-care and their everyday life. I think what's important is the mindset. It's not to feel guilty. Mm -hmm. Because women tend to feel guilty when they do things for themselves. Because they feel so responsible for so many people you know, in their lives. So start with that. Okay, so when you take time off for yourself to do what makes you happy or what gives you pleasure, you said sabi nga ni Doc Irene, what gives you joy, then you should see it as something that you owe to yourself because of the work that you do on a regular basis. So we need to make space. It's something that you really need to do for yourself because you want to be able to continue to care for others. And in order to do that, you need to look after yourself. So yeah, find whatever makes you happy. Do it. Don't yeah. feel guilty. And make it a daily practice. But before we go, I'd like to ask... Uh... Ms. Natsi, if you have any message for all the women out there. I want to greet everyone a happy National Women's Month and exhort all the women in the Philippines to please love yourself. Okay, so take care of yourself and um, remember that we need to look after ourselves in order to look after others. Very well said. And Dr. Irene, do you have any message for our viewers, especially when it comes to women's health? If we have emotional quotient, we should have health intelligence or health quotient. This is being able to assess, perceive, and manage your health. You should educate yourself, conscious of your physical well-being by doing the proper attitude, avoid harmful uh, habits like smoking and alcoholic misuse. And uh, you have to consult your family doctor or your OB gynecologist because you will not enjoy the fruits of your labor if you are always getting sick, if you're not healthy. And with that, I'd like to thank obstetrician, gynecologist, Dr. Irene Sige, and director of UPCWGS, director, Dr. Natalie Africa Verseles, for being with us today and sharing your insights. We appreciate your time very much. Remember, we all play a role in breaking the bias today. So let's celebrate women's achievement and together forge a gender equal world. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez and thank you for watching Talk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. We'll see you again next time.